Vodafone presents the pre-match. Welcome back to Katowice uh, for ESL1 Katowice. is day one of six here as we come back to the mecca of esports in Europe. It's Dota 2 action all week long as we head towards the glorious grand final on Sunday where another champion will be crowned. Or will it be a brand new champion? Secret, of course, still here. Uh, OG from the first match as well. Previous winners and also Chaos as well in the mix. But the other nine teams, None of them have won an ESL one, so maybe an opportunity for them. An opportunity for our two teams in the next match as well as we move on to our second round of Group A. It's Gambit versus FTD, a team that many of you won't be familiar with, and we'll talk about them in just a moment. But we'll start, gents, with, with Gambit. Um, we welcome Cap to the, the panel. A, 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 a rather better dressed addition to the panel than Kyle. Thank you. I actually quite liked Kyle's outfit. It's getting boring now. What? The Burgundy's been in since TI. I'm, I'm kind of oh, tired of it. Okay. I would have preferred That's him. because you had Burgundy at uh, TI as yeah, well, absolutely. Paul. I set so a trend and then everyone else followed, mm, as ever. Capitalist. Sure, um, sure, sure. Mr. Capitalist, I, I know for a fact you would not be caught dead in a Burgundy coat and a floral print shirt. I appreciate his boldness. <laughs> How about that? I have a more conservative approach to my dress, but um, I appreciate there, the is boldness. Is there going to be a more conservative approach from Gambit, or are they going to continue just running yeah, at people? right. I this think, is typical CIS yeah. Dota, isn't it? I uh, so I was going back through jet lagged watching uh, we play. We're trying to find a really white, really like watching <laughs> Gambit, man. I like watching they're Gambit so a lot. They're, they're a fun they're really team good. to watch. Yeah, fun team. Um, just the combination of their uh, what's his name? Daxic. Dahak. 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 Yeah. Right, right. You don't pronounce the X, right? Dahak and uh, immersion. Immersion. Right. Four, four position. Yeah. Like really cool. Both those players, yeah. like. Um, the Hawk has some really interesting hero pools that allows like Gambit to be able to do, I think, unique strategies. Yep. Like they they're bringing something that a lot of other teams aren't with their you know Visage. He's yep. a Meepo player, um, but Immersion was the the first time I looked at that guy. I'll be honest, I wrote him off. I was just like, man, you seem okay, I guess. Yeah. But the he's really more I watch it, he's yeah, good. He's, he's, good. he's got a good play style, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he's very much a playmaker within the team as well. You know, they mm -hmm. want him to start things, Earth Spirit and Tusk and. Maybe, he played a great Nexus Assassin what? game. I was surprised yeah. how good that was. Yeah. yeah, he's also played a lot of Tiny as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, interesting uh, interesting lineup. And of course, FNG. Um, a, a, a well, a well underrated man. as a drafter but, but, for but a, a well traveled man now. Yeah. He's been around the scene. He's been in pretty much every CIS super team that's that's been drummed up. Why yeah. is it working with these guys when it didn't really work before? Well, I think it's it's worked in a lot of previous iterations. I mean, he was pretty good with Virtus Pro over a long period of time. He was pretty good with Power Rangers over a long period of time. But what, they haven't seen success, it, though. It, 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 he hasn't had that sustained success with yeah. one squad, and that's why I like their trajectory that this Gambit team is on so much. It, it, forget about we play. You go all the way back to the Bucharest Minor. I, I thought they, they had an argument. They were looking like the better team over Ehome for part of that tournament. Okay. Uh, I thought we were going to see them in Chongqing. Still, again, this is about the point where can you get over that next hump? Uh, they're going to have to get over hump of For the Dream. He went down 2-0, by the way, in their first game of the day uh, against Mineski. Um, it would be easy for us, Cap, to look you at see? this team and go, oh, it's a new team full of young players. But actually, this is a, this is a new team full of players who are old. These players yeah, have been exactly. around for a long time. Uh, about that. Uh, I was new to sell that young guns. Like, look, listen James to this. and Chan Chan have well, been around the block a Chan, few times. Chan Chan, right, he was in Tong Fu in 2014, yeah. for yeah. crying out loud. Um, James, who used to be called Devastating, was in VG How Potential in 2015. Oh he was, 2015, uh, he was in VG Potential. I was trying they to come up potential. with that for 15 minutes It's four, just now. It's four years ago, right. for crying out loud. There was another one. Who? Um, he was a part of one of my all-time favorite team names. Used to be called Rampage. Immortal Magneto Gaming. Yes. I, I caught. I, <laughs> that is some of that is like my all time favorite Dota is 2 that name back I've in the ever heard. Dota days uh, when yeah. you were grinding. Yes, I was like, grinding some real garbage like back oh, then. I was, I, you know, I was just getting the pitchfork, just digging through manure, going through the, the tier but, three but Chinese. The point, scene. Is, the point is here, and we're all joking aside, you know, these guys are obviously good players, they got through the qualifiers. <laughs> but it's not a team that we were expecting much from at this event. No. They, you know, they didn't yeah, play no. the strongest of qualifiers. They didn't get through the qualifier for the major. They didn't get through the qualifier for the minor either, for that matter. 
it's difficult to see how they get out of this group, isn't yeah. it, Cat, without being rude about it? Well, here's the thing, Paul. You said in your opening, it's like, oh, man, Gambit, they have to get over this hump that is uh, FTD. It's more like a speed bump, you know? It doesn't stop you from going forward. You just kind of, it's kind of like a little annoying. You have to slow down a little bit, but so secrets, you're going to get over it like okay. like a 15-foot wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That you've got to drive over. And FTD and is, is the speed bump. Is speed bump. Yeah. Right. Look, I, not to be too mean, but we do, that's the, the problem with FTD is that we do have a reasonable sample size because yes. they played in some Chinese regional yeah. leagues over the last month or so, and their drafts are just... They're they, seven two zero they, drafts, they, they right? They feel a little They're still you know, Grimstroke Doom open. It, yeah, it's they, still like, it feels a bit behind, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a couple of patches ago. We just haven't, uh, you know, maybe one patch what, ago. What happens, that, it's in Dota, what happens that's when the enough. enemy team can counter Juggernaut? Like, yeah, well, oh, no. No, I was going to say, oh, Faded Jug is, is um, pretty decent. Yeah, Listen, right? let's be honest. I'll but if they don't get it, well, what else do By the do? way, this is, I mean, if you don't know what to pick in Dota right now, this is what you pick. This is pick life, but then, of course, Gambit pulls out a hero yeah. that they're incredibly confident on and happens to hard counter. I do want to say, yeah. you know, some jokes aside, uh, a couple of things, right? Chan Chan and, and James may have been around the block, but you yeah. know who else was around the block for a really long time? Faith Beyond. Yeah. He became uh, the number one true. offlaner at, yeah, at yeah. TI. He was the number one offlaner yeah. in the world, yeah. right? Sure. One at, one at TI. So... Not impossible to come. And, and I couldn't get the ages. Through. Like, I, I looked. I even asked Jack. Oh, I don't know how I was like, I don't know how old they I, were. I know so. that... Um, I when know even that Jack James doesn't James know. was 16 when he was in VG Potential, which was four years ago. So he's going to be 20 now. 20. So he's yeah. still young. That's... Relatively yeah, young. You, so this is... Um, there's still a lot that can develop in these players, as yeah. well as this team. I mean, this is a team that was one series away from making the major. Uh, in, in the upper in bracket. Upper bracket in the upper bracket. Dropped down to the lower bracket. Uh, one uh, lost lower, to King uh, Gaming. Okay, rough bracket. times. Yeah. Had, a, had a redo. Yep, yep, They're yep, like, all right, yep, minor time, baby. Yep, minor. One yep. series away in the upper in, bracket in the upper from bracket. minor. Yeah. Yep. And then the lower bracket. Uh, couldn't quite make it. Went down to the lower <laughs> bracket. One series away from making it to the minor. Didn't quite make it there either. Yeah. But again, it, 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 in these series, as you look back at the drafts, are kind of a microcosm of what you were saying earlier. It's like when when the other team knows how to counter what they happen to be running at the moment, yeah. they just they appear not to have a plan B. This is um, this is at least something a little bit different. Because they haven't played the Jakiro. Yeah, that's of, of the two teams. Gambit have run the Jakiro. Yeah. Yeah, Jakiro has been a, a popular FNG pick. But still, it, it's it's I, I I think this this Dahak Ursa has been has become a comfort pick for Gambit yeah. over the last couple of weeks, and it's just it's a hero that even if it even if it falls behind, if you have a control advantage around it, it's going to do its job. Sure. It's still going to um, output ridiculous. Hero I also want to point out um, the bans for FTD. Um, Chen, okay, yeah, we understand, kind of broken at the moment. CK. Kind of broken as well, and it's yes. after, um, it after life. It's uh, really good on on uh, CK. The Earth Spirit, however, that's a that's a that's good a great, It's a great team. immersion. Yes, hero, and I think that's what they've looked at there, isn't it? And that's I think when Cap was talking earlier about immersion really coming into his own in the yeah. early part of this season, I think that Earth, his Earth Spirit play to me has been a big part of it. Yeah. But then this is the other hero that he's had some games on recently that I've quite the liked. Knicks yeah. is, is his second most played. Nyx Assassin is a hard support to play. Like, as you know, I'm a four yep. player. Yeah. Earth Spirit's like mechanically tough, but like Nyx Assassin is hard in a different way because yeah. there's no great comeback mechanism for you, yes. but there's also not the same kind of early roaming potential that you have from Earth Spirit. So your understanding of how you play the lanes and where you're supposed to be on the map has to be at a very high level. Those um, first couple rotations just better work out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, and, and it's it's a great pickup, I think, right here. You know, Jakiro, a lot of damage you could just walk over. But the same goes with the Life Stealer, right? You wouldn't think that Nyx Assassin is actually going to be good against him, but you can stun out of Vendetta to be able to catch him while he's farmed. But he's also likely to build Radiance, right? All these Life Stealers, I haven't seen a Life Stealer not go Radiance. Yeah, I mean, it feels so, like the way the hero's being played now. So that's going to be and just Midas another, Radiance you know, like easy Spike Carapace stun that you're going to be yeah. able to catch. Yep. So. You already have the problem that right. lights you. You talk about uncontrollable damage, right? Yep. That's what you want to. That's what you want to pick next assassin into. Any surprises in the second phase? Back? You know, everybody laughed at me when I used that term. I, you know, I did. <laughs> everybody I laughed did. at me. I thought it they was. They all thought it was first, stupid. But once you, everyone was all yeah. on board with Grant Grant's unhealable damage, but by uncontrollable. No, I damage, thought I yeah. thought unhealable thought was damage was stupid from the beginning, but uncontrollable. Uh, to, to be, the, it's irreparable. irreparable. I like that a lot. Yes. Irreparable damage. Irreparable. Uh, damage. The shaman. 
for I a mean, this, this support has been a monster. Yeah. Uh, you got getting more popular, isn't it? He gives you a win condition as well. Like, he gives you opportunities to be able to take towers from a support, yeah. which is pretty unique. And on top of that, with the combination of, like, Aether Lens and his talent and stuff, he is, like, way more useful as a disabler than he has been in, like, previous patches. You, you can shackles from so far away. Are you yeah. surprised the that shackles more, have more got teams some aren't... nice duration buffs in the meantime yeah. as well? And damage buffs as well. No, are I... you surprised more teams aren't playing it? I mean, I'm, look, I'm looking through it. No, it was big. Misery, Misery's playing it a lot in Chaos. It was big at Chunking. Like, a uh, lot of the teams were... Where I, it, because it's, again, it, it's a support that gives you that gives you push presence. It gives you wave clear. It gives you tower threat. But of threat. the teams here, only chaos are, are mass picking it. Fair enough. Yeah. This is uh, oh expected. Yep. But so FTD, like hopefully yeah. we'll see the same kind of answer. You know, they picked up Life Stealer. We see the answer versa. We feel really good are, about a Gambit's you, draft. Are hopefully you, FTD are going to. Are you surprised same that they got through though? Yes. Knowing yeah. how much they've abused it. I mean, for the for the first game, no, I'm not surprised because they let it through you, and they go. We'll you, figure it you out. You look at it, you know. But this is not best of three, Cap. This is, you've got to win both. Yeah, it's best of two. You, you yeah. don't have a game to play with in any sense here. Yeah. Well, FTD don't have a whole lot of games in general to play with. So okay. <laughs> what do you, uh, you you know you get like you know they're going to be running a visage. You think you have an answer do, for do you it? Want, I'm I'm fine with that. While we wait for the last pick, fun fun quiz. Yes. Fun question. There are uh -huh. two teams here that have zero points so far in a DPC. Who are they? FTD. Yeah, that was the obvious one. Complexity. No. Oh, no, no, Cole. Okay. Is it like Maneski? Yep. Oh, wow. And that's not the team yeah, you'd expect, is it? No, <laughs> I kind of <laughs> expected I kind of expected with that. So, All right. By the they're, way, they're there's crazy. a mechanic here, the Bristleback, uh, the Bristleback pickup. Uh -huh. So one of the things that they did to nerf Visage in 721B is that level one familiars now do 20 damage, which yeah. means that it's completely blocked by a stout share block. Yeah, I and, love that you and pointed Bristle that out. And Bristle is gonna yeah. is gonna build stout. I was gonna say the exact same thing, man. Crimson Guard is gonna be so good here. Even just having the the base stout shield for some of these heroes is so good versus Visage now. Alan, because I know you like really? stats. Um, yeah. A beast at the end. Last pick. Uh, Complexity have how many points in the DPC? Oh, I can't even. Two. Ninety. 20.48. <laughs> Never mind. I'm done. I'm done. All right, so we got a, a Beastmaster. Puts pressure on the laning phase. It can actually lane against Urso, okay, because of the the boar the problem. Boar. Yeah. Um, you have Primal Roar to help control the Ursa. Can it? Can There's it, eventually going to be an Ag's problem. But how does it do? It's going to be. It's not just against an Ursa. It's probably going to. It's going to be against a Lich dual lane yeah. with Ursa, which I still think Beastmaster can die in that lane, right? I mean, they're going to have, I don't, like, I'm sure you can still die in that lane. Like, especially in the first two levels. Once you right. get, like, four to level two, level three, it's a bit better. I'm, di I'm just not sure if, like, I like the timing of what Beastmaster gives you here. Because you, like, you needed some sort of solid initiator, right? But you, the, all, the problem with uh, Bristleback and Timbersaw, these heroes, it's like all the enemy has to do is just not play into them. Yep. Right? So, yep. in that case, what you need to do to help augment your Bristleback strategy is be able to have something that forces fights on the enemy that they can't get away from. Um, I'm not sure how much I like Beastmaster as that option. Uh, just because he's a slower offlaner, right? He's not like the the most natural uh, life stealer vehicle, you know. And he's not going to be the fastest hero for you to be able to find those openings. Wow, this is the mid tide, right? That should isn't this mid tide? Win, I, this could be. I, I, th I think this, this is their deso tide. Like, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be sick. Yeah. It's gonna be absolutely sick. I, I, I think if they run this as like a as like a carry tide hunter, they're they're gonna he's gonna destroy this game. Well, it's gonna um, yeah. I mean if it's if it's I guess you could still do mid visit. Yeah, I mean after is the matter. one that normally plays it in the offlane, so would that not be where it goes? I don't know, man. I th well, I I just think it's tide visage in there. And if tide gets quick the hack farm. is gonna play that visage, right? No, the hack will play the Ursa, right? No, he's, there, he's, he's been playing yeah, like, yeah, when, I, I when they do pick up the Ursa, yeah. he's still playing. Oh, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, oh. they did that at uh, We Play. Yeah. Okay. After, so Afterlife was on the Ursa at We Play? No. Uh, F and Inch. Uh, okay. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to lead pretty heavily here for Gambit. I feel yeah. like it's, despite they picked it up like second after the Life Stealer, I think it's still um, a Disa, decent Ursa lane. I think most of the lane matchups are going to be okay with them. Um, and again, I, I kind of feel like the Beastmaster is just too slow 
of an offlaner to to be that kind of like tempo that you needed for your life stealer bristleback to really go off and that's you know solid 15 25 minutes when you start feeling strong all right uh, let's uh, bring in our commentary team because they're ready to bring you our second series of the day. Gents, uh, what did you make of that draft? Uh, that draft is kind of fun. Um, it's always uh, a dangerous thing, though, when you have a panel who says, hey, guys, like maybe this draft's too slow against Gambit. <laughs> like, that's that that's a concerning thing to say, yeah, the least. At least Gambit did get nerfed a bit in the B patch that came out recently, specifically Visage. Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't know how much that'll affect this game, I agree with Cap. I think the tide's gonna be really cool. Don't know if we'll go with Deso, but yeah, <laughs> I definitely give them the edge. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's uh, it's it's interesting draft. Also interesting teams that we have. Like we we cast a lot of Gambit throughout the minor, um, and obviously through everything else that we were doing. Uh, but you also look at FTD, a team who I'm fairly certain both of us have never cast, even if we have cast their players a long, long time ago. As uh, the panel was racking up the old players from VG potential, uh, and so on and so forth. But it's hard to have underest underestimate a Chinese team, especially mm -hmm. like. Remember watching all the qualifiers, right? Like, like yes. it's like open qualifiers, so closed qualifiers. It doesn't matter. Like, no team is ever guaranteed to get through a Chinese qualifier because there's always this just talent pool, which is just so deep yep. inside of China that you, it's like, okay, well, this is, this could be like China C grade team, but uh, don't worry, it, they could still beat Gambit. Yep. That's why I feel like the scene is just more stacked than it's ever been before. When you think about the top level, and you know, outside of LGD, you don't include any Chinese teams in the top eight. I'd say. Mm -hmm. And yet, you can't discount them either because you never yep. know who's just going to have this new stack. Like, C-Deck came out of nowhere. Wings, you know, these teams were comprised of people that, sure, they'd been in the scene, but they were never, like, they weren't yeah. tier one. They weren't winning tournaments. Then all of yeah. a sudden, they just... Phew. It's the nice thing, too, about the Chinese teams where you've always got this mix. Like, it's two or three of the veteran pros and two new up-and-comers. Like, they... It's really a, it's, it's heavy sustain for their entire region that they're always going to have like this depth because having a team that could be number one dominant, this this is a more troublesome thing. And we'll see how FDD do. That was the moral of the story. It's like never count any team out. I, I, I've taken this rule ever since I counted out Koreans uh, during well, all events they began with. Uh, and never, ever, 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 ever again. So, laning-wise, it looks like Gambit. What a surprise, they're getting aggressive. A triple lane up on top, chasing James into the tree lines. And this Shadow Shaman's days are definitely numbered. They'll have to chase him a long way into the trees, and thanks to the boots he picked up early on, um, he'll be able to walk faster back into the vision of Gambit. Yeah, but the, the problem is, he TP'd top. So, for the Dream, they lost their lanes, like, just that first wave, was, they hard lost because they were rotating cores and didn't want to TP out. But Rasta burned his TP to come top, so now Beastmaster is going to be left alone against this super aggro tri lane. And yeah, the Visage Birds were nerfed, but his tri lane efficiency did not get tweaked one bit. And they're even going to land the hard camp pull. No, I'm just barely missed it. Don't get that. But they do get something else on bottom lane. Is this even something? Like Live Seal versus the Tana to match up. Jakiro's come down to bottom lane to try and harass out the tide. Yep. Is, is this is this the, the trade-off that you're okay? Like, okay, Beastmaster's gonna do it tough underneath the tower, but your life stealer should get a lot early on. The problem is that because Tide won the first couple waves, he'll be level three very soon, and... That, that harass means nothing? Yeah, exactly. And you just CS with your anchor smash. Life stealer wins this lane with the plus one because you harass him level one. You win the initial few trades, and you get that first wave with three or four denies. But now, Tide... You just buy more regen if he really has to. He doesn't care. And Tide's going to have a really nice time down here. He'll be able to trade pretty much 50-50. It's actually kind of nice watching that 11.8 health health regen. Will it actually be enough, however, with the dual breath connecting? Open wounds slowing him down. The three mangoes are doing so much work. And you know yeah. VT Faded really wants that kill. It would mean so much for this lane if they can claim it. But it's Tidehunter, exactly what you talked about now being proved. If he's if he doesn't have level three there, he dies. But because he gets that extra point in Kraken Shell, the clicks are not enough damage to take him down. and. He just salves to full, so mm -hmm. you can try that again if you want, but it just takes so much mana from the Chikiro up top. Yeah, they're going to go again, this time on to the Beastmaster. And uh, he's trying to juke it as much as he can, but there's so much movement speed slow provided by the Lich. That immersion hitting the Impel, which is not the easiest stun to ever land, uh, is a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, and mid matchup is definitely Ursa favorite as well. So you're in a scenario now where Gambit feel very confident in three lanes and Panel was talking about, I think their draft, this is vintage Gambit. You know, they 
they just beat NIP at the We Play Valentine Madness event, three to one, and two of those games were built around this visage. I'm sure, he's nerfed, but this kind of game still hits structures pretty hard. <laughs> that's, yeah. what that's what I'm like trying to like, like think about. Like we know Gambit hell of a lot, but let's let's think about FTD. Like how do they how do they hit a timing in this one? You're getting farm onto your life stealer, even though the Tide Hunter is definitely getting a lot more out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but your Bristleback, like this front liner could be insanely tanky. Does he function well against the Gambit lineup going into this early phase where Gambit will be adding a lot of pressure? It's possible. I'm just, I'm fearful just for the back lines. I feel like Jakiro Rasta are what you're looking to apply that pressure to like get your draft snowballing, but they're going to have issues finding levels. And more specifically, you just die to Visage. That's the big problem. The birds just run at you, you get grave chilled, and all of a sudden you are dead. And you have to use your spells ineffectively. And for the dream, you want to make sure you're you're rocking and rolling. So that involves getting the life stealer very far ahead, Bristleback get to this point where he's pretty much unkillable, and that protects these supports from the the birds. Jakiro is rotated up towards the top lane. He's only got level two, however, so at least he can turn around for a three-man dual breath going into FNG on the back lines, combining with the shackles. This damage output is good for FTD, and Gambit thought they could be as aggressive as they were previously. Immersion has to burn the mango for Spike Carapace space. At the same time, I keep my eyes on that mid lane. It's an arcane room bristleback. He's been so aggressive. He had all the regen in the world. Use the fortification to keep the pressure up underneath the tier one tower and even gets FNG to TP to that mid and not to the top. He could have found a kill there if he had dove a little more aggressively. He wasn't going to tank tower, but chooses to just let him live with a bit of harass. Ah, oh, man. They'll, they'll take three of the five minute bounty runes at least. So like his level I, of aggression at least brings one of the supports and creates that space. I have not seen a Jakiro put a point in liquid fire this early in quite some time. It's strange. It was. Like, I've seen a lot of Jakiro supports, but traditionally people are just maxing Ice Path after two points in their queue. I suppose when he's in the lane against a Tide Hunter, what does Ice Path really... A lot. Grant, grant, it does, does yeah. grant you enough over a second, wave, a second wave of harassment? It's uh, for a TP interrupt as well, because now you're in a top lane where you have no stun outside of the Rasta Shackle. So if that fades, like, someone could just kite into trees, get away. Hmm. I don't know, we'll see. It's like the old build. I just yeah. feel like Max Ice Path, especially in a game like this, where you really want to just peel as much as possible against the Visage, against the Ursa. You want that max ASAP. Yeah. That's aggressive try lane. Gambit are keeping up with it. This does make it a little bit more difficult for Nyx to hit that early six. And the Hawk flying out gives them a lot of extra information in the lane so FTD can play better positioning. They even throw down an Observer Ward. I don't know if that was actually scattered out there by Immersion, but Afo, yeah, I see a haste ruined Ursa Warrior coming towards the top lane, and FTD, they're moving into a position like they feel they're the aggressors, but this will turn very, very quickly. They already start over on the Jakiro, but FNG, like Afro, he wants more. The shackles from James will create a little bit of space. Jakiro actually gets the kill onto FNG. And he'll lose his life for it, but this is the rotation of your mid. It's a two-for-one trade-off. Yeah, but he's going to TP mid right away. He actually missed one creep. Uh, that's really well-timed rotation. We saw mid one do this in the previous game. It's very important as a mid player that if you're going to rotate, you don't just cash in on the movement, but it's at a time when you're either around objectives like boundary and spawn, or when your creep wave is pushed aggressively so that you don't lose much. Then you can just TP back. Uh, you end up impacting a side lane, but your game is not threatened. Because really, if you miss two creep waves and you go help a side lane get two kills, you actually fall very far behind in a one-to-one. -one. Yep. But if he can just keep that advantage up, uh, that'll work in his favor. Yeah, this bristle's but, huge. Yeah, though. he's he's 3.3k net worth. He's 300 above that of the of the uh, visage, and he's looking to go even deeper on the earth. But that's why FNG is here. You want to go in deep, bristle back still. These quill spray stacking up, and Earth has got to be careful. The enrage he'll actually pop. So Lich will get the advantage from the death of the bristle back as a 1-1 one, one trade off in the mid. Or <laughs> yeah. I think you're okay with that, just because Bristol is the tempo controller for For the Dream. Like, he becomes unkillable, and then their draft is a problem. If Bristol is never gonna, it never gets to the point where he isn't a target for you, then the lineup of Gambit's gonna thrive. And to your point about the supports being underleveled, I feel like that favors the Knicks as well, because you're really just there to shut down the support combo. And Rasta, as soon as he hits level six, and that's why you know, even see he's actually mid now as Bristleback moves to the jungle, because they recognize like we need this guy to have six, not just for the wards, but you, he has arcanes already. You need at least level five so you can start pushing creep waves with your lightning. Mm -hmm. Invis Lich on the way top. 
Now, see if he can actually achieve anything, however. They can go after a Jakura, but even Jakura, who's got a stick, a smoke, as well as a clarity, that's all he's got, still has 840 HP and two armor to get through. That's a little bit more difficult. This target, however, is easier. James walking around as a shaman. He starts with the Aether Shock over on the next assassin, and well, he can get back to his shrine potentially. The Sinister Gaze as well as done. Not the perfect combination of abilities, but they have enough follow up thanks to the level one Frost Blast of FNG to get the kill. So Gambit, maybe still a little bit shaken up. They did get a 1 1 result against Forward earlier, like literally an hour ago. Yeah. I think that's to be expected, though. Those teams are probably. Tier, like, you know, second, third best in the respective regions, tier two, and a bit streaky and draft dependent. Uh, I feel like this is a, a lineup that Gambit's certainly experts at, but mm -hmm. it, a lot's going to come down to the Afterlife Tide. He's having a great game bottom. Sure, he's behind the Life Stealer, but considering the matchup, I think that's better than average. And he's going to have a Vlad's real soon. You could hit a tempo timing for Gambit where you just start marching down lanes with Ravage available, mm -hmm. and I don't actually know how you stop it as for the dream. Well, if if you're Bristleback and he can stand the front yeah, lines, that'll be good. Uh, your supports, they have some interference. <laughs> this Jakura, ever since you mentioned, like, hey, you haven't got Ice Path, man. Like, you need yes. that You need that fourth. He hasn't, hasn't got level yeah, four. Right? <laughs> it has been an absolute nightmare for him. This is a miserable game to play Jakiro. Like, both supports on FTD really prefer dual laning, but oh, the wow. aggro tri from Gambit made that impossible. All right, if VT Fader can get this solo kill, TP support's coming in, but he had the damage output. No anchor smash affected him anymore. This is huge. And Bristleback, he's like running towards top. He's got a Vanguard, but it's tough for them to make any real moves here. They're it battling for the 10 minute runes. Yeah. That's the reason why Gambit are moving over as well. See, the dual breath flies out. It'll only clip FNG, but it's all for the rune, and it's actually Immersion who's able to get the bounty. But they want more. Shackles out. Bounty for the Nyx Assassin will be the trade off. But the worth. kill goes to the Bristleback, which does that still then make it worth? I think so. Let me check the fight. Um. You, he lost 95 gold, the Dire side got 212, the Bounty Rune's worth... How much? Did you see the number that popped up? I didn't I see. I want to say it's around oh, like 10 minutes. 70. Yeah, yeah. W worth worth across the board, but it's, it's uh, allowing Bristleback to build quicker into this Crimson Guard. Mm -hmm. So he's able to start to rack up a lot more early armor. Yeah, and Crimson Guard is big here because the change to the Visage Birds means that when even when they're max level, they're getting near full block on Crimson. So the Visage, his ult is completely neutralized outside of the stuns whenever that Crimson Guard is popped. Oh, wow. Very important. Shadow time, Shaman. Right? Okay, FNG looking for the solo, but he can't get the balance. He'll come back up again. But James, stick charge the verbal. He'll get the shackles off, but here comes the Brusta back. Wants the kill on FNG, the ice pop. Hey, he's got level four. There we go. Uh, they can finally use abilities properly. But uh, you've also got Tidehunter. No <laughs> Ravage skilled, and he doesn't have a yeah. saved point either. They will not know that, though. No, they will not. But uh, that's a lot of heroes from Gambit arriving. They wanted probably a little bit more than this because Lifestealer, as well as Bristleback, they're moving so far ahead in net worth. The hand of Minus was very quick, yep. over onto Faded, and now he's even going to beat into the Tier 1 tower on bottom lane with his Creep Wave. And we saw this in the game OG won against Secret. Like, this hero is nuts. Like, Lifestealer, <laughs> you can <laughs> see, like, a faster Midas than average. Even though maybe you're a bit uh, weaker than Gambit as a side, this is such an easy draft concept for them to execute now. You have the Bristle and the Life Stealer just front line. They deal massive amounts of AoE damage, and yet they are near unkillable. And the rest of the draft just kind of fans out behind them and says, you know, you guys go ahead. We'll, we'll be right there. They're looking to see Gambit how much damage they can do to the tier one tower up on top. They also scanned to the north of the mid lane, expecting some level of rotation there, but instead it's the Bristleback coming top with an illusion rune. So Immersion can look towards him, hiding inside the Vendetta, still got half the duration left as uh, Brussel. He's got the Buckler. There's so much extra armor, but we'll see just how well that works. They try and break him. Beastmaster, Roar of Albal. He stuns over on the Ursa, keeping him out of the play, allowing Bristleback a little bit more time to bottle charge up, get out of range of that Ursa Warrior. Do they want to bring more heroes? Four already up here for Gambit, but what's there for FTD? The Lich Chain Frost, he'll bounce the ball and then bounce up towards the Beastmaster. Now we'll wear up with the War Trap, catching Nyx Assassin in the back lines. Now Faded will arrive, but Gambit already on the way out they realize this is not working so that that fight is actually all on immersion he needs to carapace the spine timing like he could have done that quite easily then you're gonna have a full stun lock during the break hit 
from your ultimate. Instead, he carapaces on top of his stun, and the Bristle's able to move away during that precious window where you actually can deal real damage through his spines. And a bit of a wasted TP from the Life Stealer, but looking around the map, he might prefer to be in the safe lane anyway just because of how strong he is as a hero. Um, mm -hmm. This enables Bristle to keep playing jungle. He actually TP'd towards bottom. So now you put your real tanky threat just to pressure the off lane, where perhaps he didn't want to play anymore. But the question yeah, he is to leave. You don't want to really fight into Gambit right now, still. They, you know they have Ravage for sure. Yep. And this is their timing. Like They've got HOD, they've got birds. Lich has maxed out armor. It's, it's very difficult to fight into them. Just keep split pushing and accelerating. Choose your battles wisely. I thought they would have actually tried to buy a little bit more time. They didn't burn the fortification on the tier one tower. So while this fight happens in mid, Gambit could have still been trying to push in that top lane. And it's all about Gambit moving forward instead. The Sinister Gates pulling Jakiro back into the Lich and allowing Afro the kill he wants. He only just completed up that hand of Midas. And you know they smoke up. They want to go for Roshan. No Vlads, but it won't matter if they can get away with this. Oh, actually, I yeah, take it back. It's on Tidehunter. So yeah, they have Vlads. They're all good. Yep, another part of the reason Ursa is so meta at the moment. You just get this early Roche potential. It's the same with OG. Beastmaster. He's sending the boars in. They need information. Beastmaster Roar is already back off cooldown. Ursa getting stunned up by Roshan, so they're not feeling comfortable. Mass Serpent Wards have another eight seconds before they're back up as well. But Roshan, so low on life. Beastmaster, he goes for the Roar. The Over Ravage. on Ursa, the Ravage, however, it already hits so hard. Combining with the Lich Chain Frost, Bristleback, he's low on life. This Crimson Guard didn't do anywhere near enough for him. The Radiant did take the Aegis Immortal, and it's in the hands of the Ursa. They want to be able to kill him off. They should be able to achieve that. The Jakiro is kind of playing with the Visage, but it's, it's, uh, it's kind of the silly dragon. Um, he's not going to be able to survive through this. Way too much of Gambit. FTD didn't bring everybody. They they shouldn't, though. I think leaving Roche there is just fine. Like, you're not able to fight in the pit, as we just saw demonstrated. You Beastmaster's is roaring life, uh, Ursa, but for what? Yeah. Lich ult ravaged, you're, you're dead now. It was... And the timing seemed off as well. The yeah. Beastmaster Hawk wasn't seeing inside the pit. Just not, not the right decision there. And you can see also the power of Ursa in this draft. Even though it was opened with, they picked Bristle into him. And Ursa just, that bear eats Bristleback and Lifestealer for breakfast. Like this entire game, Afo Ninja is going to be able to do that, where you just pop ult and hit Bristle. And especially with the Nyx, it's so easy to stun lock him because he's always going to be back spining as you do damage to him. Mm -hmm. Carapace it, hit him with the break, Ursa shreds him. Yeah, unless you can get that jump from someone like a Lifestealer. But this is probably one of those few games where, like, it's not like the the game we had previously with Live Steel, where you had like a, a delivery system in the form of the slaughter. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist unless he's gonna tag on board with a yep. Bristleback who runs in. That's that's not that surprise jump. Maybe that's when you think like Beastmaster needs to pick up a Blink Dagger, just to be that aggressive gank combination. Hey, you need something, but I, I actually like what he's done. He just went for the Rush Vlads. I think go Solar next. Just. Just go full team fight, really, because your Bristle and your Life Stealer are the only ones that can walk into fights. And that, that was why that went so wrong. Life Stealer wasn't there. Beastmaster's trying to initiate. He's more of a combo breaker. Let your tanky cores actually get involved first. Fate is able to just rage and walk away. Support is nearby, and it's Afro on the aggress. He's up. Okay, I did not just do that. Um, Fate is back up on the top. Back to the tier three tower to safety. I did not talk like that. Punch me if I ever talk like that ever again, Kyle. I love picture. James, in he goes. Now to get the master up and wards down, and maybe they actually have a little bit of aggression, but no, Afro, he just goes ham. Doesn't have the enrage, but he's got the Aegis Immortal. He's got a ticket to just keep fighting. FNG will fall, and they look for that fight over towards the Life Stealer, away from the Shrine, which has no charge. Here comes Shakira. The Ice Path catches absolutely no one, but the stuns from the Familiars. The Hark is just way too good, enabling Afro then blink in aggressively onto QIQX. We'll find the kill, and Immersion's oh. now doing the job, looking for the control. He doesn't have any mana, however, so he can't burn off he anything else. They go back into the Mass Serpent Wars, giving FTD that little bit of extra chance, that little bit of extra damage. So Afro's Aegis Immortal, it will burn off. Beastmaster has the boars to provide, so there's at least it's a little bit of slow. But James, he TP'd in, but he's underneath the Visage with the buffed up Familiars. They were ready to fight, and FTD, this fight has dragged on so long. But what have they achieved, apart from potentially another death? This Beastmaster is on the run, but the Grave Chills slows him down. The, again, the stuns from the familiar just continuously control. And keep in mind, Tide yeah. is not even here. But what are they doing, man? You, your life stealer doesn't have Radiance yet. He was 800 gold away. Why, why take this engagement? 
defend your tower, sure, throw a body here and there if you'd like, but realistically, just keep ratting. Like, wait, you have a halberd soon on your bristleback. Like, get radiance. They wanted action, action, action. That Aegis is active. And Immersion, actually, they should have killed Bristle, but he messed up again with Carapacing because he opened and then Carapaced. And Bristleback is too smart to just spam his W button when, uh, whenever it's off cooldown, stun himself. <laughs> like, you gotta use your um, Carapace while in Fizz and just surprise him. Sentry is going to be deep watered, so Nyx Assassin can move a little bit more freely, but it did at least give information to FTD that Immersion is on the hunt. So we just spike Carapaz into the Jakira Macro Pie, but Jakira's already back at the tier three tower. I'm glad, I'm glad. I was like, I was questioning myself, like, you can still use that while it's invis, right? Like, that wasn't changed. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> it just it just needs to be time better because good Bristle players understand how to play around Nyx. Um, and it's also, it's going to prove very troubling for Lifestealer as well. If he goes to this Radiance and doesn't toggle it off after Rage fades, um, oh, he could theoretically just stun himself in Creep Waves when he's farming. The Observer and Sentry from Gambit knows that James is all by himself. He'll get himself a little, a little bit of distance and back to base safely. Going to increase that cast range and FTD. My god, they're going to have to have, like, they, they need a good fight against Gambit oh, they, where they can catch up, but they don't want it yet. Well, the problem is they would have wanted it, but they lost that huge engagement, so now they're still behind. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to use the Radiance uh, freshly on Faded, trying to get the kill onto the Tight Hunter crack and will help him break free. Meanwhile, you could say goodbye to your Jakiro, but man, they need this kill. They're trying to do everything to not use Beastmaster Raw, and now the Ravage! It gets burnt, and he'll walk away. <laughs> Space. I, space created, Jakiro dies, but uh, Tidehunter lives. Burn a drum charge, that's where that burst of movement speed came from as well. That was really well played. He ulted right as the rage was fading and just got the distance. I, I like that he went the drums before Blink as well. That's another example of why buying these early stat items is often more effective than just Blink Dagger, because that's what keeps him alive. He can always get the Blink later, but it doesn't provide you any raw stats, survivability, or utility. And and drums just, just does all of those things. All right, Beastmaster, you want to roll for that Nyx Assassin? Don't think you do. He canceled the TP at Bristol back, so Bristol couldn't take the farm up on top lane. Another huge thing, because they need to finish off this Halbert Dude. to stop the Ursa from just wrecking everybody. Yeah, they just gained so much gold lead. It was 6k oh, a moment ago, Ursa now has it's a, 9. Ursa has a BKB now. Yeah. 20 minutes in, he's already finished the BKB. Yeah, this is... They are ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, Aegis has faded, but it's just so much easier for them to take engagements, even without Ravage. You have a mech finished on Lich. FNG is going to be pulling it out to himself in just a moment, and they're connecting. Immersion really can just be king of these fights because four heroes on the side of FTD cannot stop from dealing their damage, and oh. he just walks into Carapaces. Underneath the Observer and Sentry, they want to fight, and goodbye, Jakira. Afo moves so quickly. Impossible to stop him. And the Lifesteal is trying to get some counter push on bottom lane, but the Tidehunter keeps the momentum forward, always. You will have a window here. You're going to have a Halberd actually rushed on the Lifestealer as well as the Bristleback, who is about to finish his, his Talisman of Evasion. He does have the gold now. You can potentially disarm Ursa. Disarm the Vizit. I really just disarm Ursa, but more importantly is the Mischance, because the birds, the Earth, like everyone's damage is reduced, and no one on the side of Gambit really want to buy MKB, mm -hmm. at least not for a while. Well, good sentry what They see the next assassin hex up. He'll still get the spike. Carapace stuns out, and that's why they wait for the ice path to control up this next. They want to get rid of him. Oh, wow, Roar, they're yeah. committing. Roar as well. Macro Pyre, everything else they could throw once that spike Carapace was gone. Yeah, but it's, it's credit to Gambit, though, because they're playing this like their advantage just went up another thousand, right? Because. Yeah, you're getting this kill FTD, but you've got to take more risks. You've got to get out on the map. And you see this as a common issue with teams that don't have a ton of experience, where they are content to lose slowly instead of taking chances that, while maybe, yeah, you lose faster, mm -hmm. you need to take those chances because otherwise you will inevitably just falter. Like, yep. you've got to get out on the map. You've got to leave your base. You've got to split up and perhaps even force an engagement here. Beastmaster dies because he's just completely alone. Like, yep. that top area of the map is dead. Mirror the movements, play bottom jungle play around your life stealer. It just seems also like uh, like the polar opposite. How much Gambit has to try to get a kill compared to how much FTD has to try to get a kill. Yep. Like this is that disparity in mind, disparity in items, disparity in your cores. It's, it's again, these like strength core metas, right? Where you have all three cores on Gambit that are increasing their damage output and survivability simultaneously. So they can slay you and you just can't slay them back. The rage TP away. This will save Faded from death. 
Russell Beck is still farming up. So the high ground defense of FTD is still quite nice. Like they still have some really good disables. Oh. Cannot forget just how powerful a Shaman can be. Uh, he's got level one shackle, so maybe not that great, but uh, it's 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 that ability to nuke down the wave and, and me, me and the Gamba have to run in. Actually, then again, do you care? Your, your Ursa is so damn big. Your yep. Tide is big, your Visage is big. Even your Nyx is big, and then you're gonna add damage reduction from the Lich. Okay, maybe that isn't a concern at all then. <laughs> Gamba can just go up and they're smoked to look to do the same thing. They can just go here. If they find the roster of the Jakiro, they just explode. Mm -hmm. Blink Ravage level two on Tidehunter. They want any target that's not the Bristleback. Yep, you can see they're, they're doing a good job here. FNG is going to move towards bottom. He's the least valuable member of his team, so he can just shove out this lane. The rest of the squad just enters that circle that he drew on the minimap, kick out FTD from their own woods, secure the Roshan area. That'll respawn in 38 seconds. You can look to get aggressive then. Take, you know, don't fight until that spawns. Because you really only can let FTD back into this if you make some sort of huge miscue. I don't see them losing a team fight. And they're gonna smoke away from the Roche pit. It's gonna spawn in just a moment. Their position there was also scattered out because they threw yeah. down a sentry ward, which was instantly dewarded by Gambit. Yeah, this is the telegraph smoke. They knew they were coming. Mm -hmm. They were on the ward. And all of a sudden, you, just what are we doing in the bottom map part of the map, Tobes? It's how, fine. How do you not even telegraph that? Like the Visage birds are pushing out the side lanes continuously. Like, no matter what happens, you leave your oh, base, Roche. it's gonna look oh, a little no. bit more obvious and... Uh... They checked a second before it spawned. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. FNG's gonna go, boom, boom. Hey guys, Roshan's up now, we know. But this has to be, like, can... Does FTD not contest this? Dude, but... I don't... The, the Beastmaster's in a little trouble. Oh no, he's gonna kill a bird, but they're on the way. He resummons. Ah, he's not gonna make it. TP out in time. But they already look towards Roshan. The ping coming in from Urza is like, guys, I really want to go for this. But it's a good Beastmaster Hawk this time around. It's watching the northern side of the pit. So they at least understand Gambit's movements towards Roshan. But Gambit have so many Observer Wards around the bottom side of the Dire Jungle yeah, that and they see everything anyway. Like again, it's like FTD, I get what they're trying to do here. But if you were going to get aggressive in your own woods before, uh, I mean, they learned that lesson, right? You can't really contest the pit. Mm. My concern is just that they're farming so safely. I, I think somebody had to be clearing enemy woods for you know, the last three or four minutes easily. They're hoping for the dream fight, right? Yeah, but they're not... I don't know. Is Gambit going to give it to him? We'll see. I mean, Lifestealer's won a lot of games I didn't think he should so far on this patch. Mm -hmm. oh, cool stat. A lot of pets going down in this game. Compared to the birds, which is only like 400 gold, it was, uh, yeah. But here, here comes Gambit, once again pushing through the mid, but uh, that's why FTD are trying to keep the the mid lane, the bottom lane pushed out. So it's just top lane. Jakira could just block it. You can't macro pyre right now, and that's also not great. The courier got sniped having the Ghost Scepter of Shaman. He was farming up the bottom lane, and that's his ability to survive. And he just used mass serpent wards on the bottom lane in the trees. They wouldn't have that for this high ground defense anymore. The Crimson Guard will really help protect FTD's towers, and maybe they can get rid of some of these birds. Like, there's no resummon available for him, but they're pushing in the bottom lane. Beastmaster is trying to force a TP back. Lifesteal's coming down as well. They're going for a trade-off, letting the Bristleback be the frontline fighter, but Afo is so much stronger. And you say goodbye to your Bristleback. The bottom tier three tower, it loses a third of its life, but the top tower, hilariously enough, is still alive, but their own Crimson Guard being popped up. That's the one from the Visage. Ravage sp sprays out, cats out in three heroes. The bigger one is the Lifestealer. They get another core kill, and even the Spike Carapace done onto the Chikira, meaning it can go from one to the other. The split soul assumption damage. It does heavy work, but Chikira can tank through it, and maybe they can control up the Nyx Assassin FTD, the defense. But no, you have cheese. He got the life straight back up again. Now Afro is just going to rip apart the back line of FTD. Nowhere to stand. This will be a dieback from the Bristle. He does nowhere near enough damage, and now they can just take the top lane of Rax in relative peace, or they can take more kills. Either or. Chikira is gone. His buyback's expanded. Faden, if he goes down to Soup. That's both of your large cores, nice. both of your networks have nothing available as the rage wears off, the impale is perfect, and that may actually just be half of the game right there. In fact, it is the full game according to FTD. They lose the fight very convincingly, and uh, Gambit take game one in the same fashion. It's a shame. They're, they're pressing their buttons really well on the side of FTD. Like they're, you can see the potential there. They're just not executing around the map like they need to. And Gambit, this is... Like, this is their, this is the house sauce for yeah. Gambit, okay? This is what they love 
this is how they play Dota. You gave away, I'd say, top three heroes for every core. FNG's playing Lich. Mm -hmm. He spams the crap out of this hero, even post nerf. You, you gotta have more than that. And Gambit, you know, well played, but I've seen them win a game in this fashion, you know, 10, 15 times over the last couple months. Yeah. It's nothing new. Yeah. This is what they're gonna do. You see the expressions on their face, like, it's just another day at the office for Gambit. Like, I'm like, Afro wins 16 1 4 on this Ursa Warrior, and it didn't even really feel like Gambit felt too much pressure on any of the lanes. Like, Tidehunter, no kills, doesn't matter. He did his job for the team perfectly. They hit their their item timings. The Vlads was never delayed, so Ursa could get the level one Roshan with no problem. Uh, even more of a no problem when f for the Dream, like the like contest uh, was not right either. I'm scared, like looking at their faces, you know, not much talking going on. This mm -hmm. is their third loss in a row. They were 2 0 by Maneski earlier today. Yep. They were the only, they were the only team so far. Like in the first in the first wave of games that happened, everyone went one one, but FTD against Maneski, it didn't end well. At least those games lasted longer. They they had a thirty three minute and a forty minute game, uh, in that. So they got at least a little bit of room to run their legs and warm up. But yeah, coming coming into this game, like heads are down. This is this is not what you want to see for for the dream. If you want to see them pick it up and come back in game two. Yeah. And I think they're going to need to... It's tough because you will look at the, the team's flaws are not something that's easy to fix. Yeah. Like where they're playing on the map. Like even just the laning phase. The, they put themselves on the back foot right away yeah. because they were late to read the rotations and they had to then walk and swap lanes. So again, a free wave for Tide, mm -hmm. a free wave for the Vistage Tri-Lane top. They got wrecked in that top lane. It just... Yeah. You just do the little things right. It makes it so much easier to t deal with the big things like, hey, how do we win a team fight? But to correct those little things is difficult for the Dream. Need to tighten it up for game two. They definitely do. Uh, plenty of work for the Chinese team to think about during the break and the downtime. Uh, that downtime will be filled by our two experts on the panel once more to break down a very thoroughly convincing win for Gambit Esports. Cap and the Hazard alongside. Gents, sir, uh, I don't know much you can say about that. It was a thoroughly you know, dominant performance by the CIS team. It pains me to say this, but I think Kyle absolutely nailed it in what he said at the very end. It's it's at this level of Dota, when you come to a land like this and you're giving away free waves in potentially 1v1 lanes, like that's the kind of advantage that at this level of play teams are going to capitalize on hugely. Uh, the tri lane top obviously worked out really well. We're seeing Nyx Assassin come back in these tri lanes look very, very good so long as he has set up. Uh, I like the Hawk's itemization on his visage, but at the end of the day, Gambit comes at you and you don't match their tempo, you're going to struggle. Yeah, and this isn't um, something we haven't seen before, Cap, is it? It's not like they would have been surprised by this. They, they would have known this was coming. No, I mean, we said. Like, should they have given away the Visage? Yeah. Like, I'm okay with it. Like, you've got a plan for it. Uh, Did they, though? Didn't, didn't work out. <laughs> no, I, I, it was a bad plan, yeah, but I, it was a plan. Was, was there a plan? And was, if, there, if there was a plan, I mean, what was it? What did I mean, your hero ever do in fights? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I've been messing around with Jakiro a little bit. I, it doesn't feel that strong. Uh, okay. I think the, the draft, was, they set themselves on the back foot the moment they just, like, first picked Lifestealer, and there's Ursa in the pool. Um, you pick... Bristleback into Lich. I don't think the Beastmaster was going to solve any of your issues. Uh, yeah, you questioned the Beastmaster. The, the laning phase situation is yeah. like... Yeah, it was a messy draft, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it's. I, I, I think the draft, though, would have looked at least okay going into the mid-game had you not made these stumbles. I mean, it, there, there was a point yeah. in the early game where FTD were nursing this small advantage, mm. but you, you never had the feeling that once Gambit got to the point where they were playing on the other side of the map, yeah. that FTD would ever be able to dislodge them. Yeah, when you play, I mean, no, go on. Tri lane versus tri lane, when you play it straight, like you're both there at the yep, same time yep. and you're all sharing experience, there is a very clear power spike where because of the creep equilibrium, say you body blocked, your the range creep goes forward. You body blocked, your own range creep dies out first. Normally, you think that's good because it pulls the creep equilibrium back, but it does give the enemy team a very big power spike where they hit their level two before you. And you have to be very careful with right. that. That's when it's, you know, both teams have gotten there at the same time and everything's happening fine. And this, this is trial in 101. It, it, when too. this situation happens where they're like, oh, hey, we've got a free levels. We're going to be able to get, you know, our level twos straight up, like way before you. Like the laning phase is just going to snowball really hard. Was there, was there anything for FTD to pull out of that game and, and think, yeah, that's a positive. We did that well. You got it in the cap. 
I'm not a miracle. All right. <laughs> well, um, sometimes it's just a one-sided match, and uh, hopefully we won't get another one of those as we head towards the break right now. When we come back, we'll get a second game for FTD to maybe equalize things up. But my goodness, it's going to be a hell of a game if that's going to be the case. Game it in charge in this best of two. We'll see shortly. Carapace stuns out, and that's why they wait for the Ice Path to control up this mix. They want to get rid of it. Oh, wow, Roar. they're committing. Roar as well. It does heavy work, but Shakira can tank through it, and maybe they can control up the Nix Assassin FTD. The defense, but no, you have Cheese. He got the life straight back up again. Now Avro is going to rip apart the backline of FTD. Nowhere to stand. This will be a dieback from the Bristle. He does nowhere near enough damage, and now they can just take the top lane of Rags in relative peace, or they can take more kills. Either or, Shakira is gone.